what up guys so this is going to be a video which is going to be both a neck workout uh, featuring the neck flex of course my amazing sponsor but also a q a uh, that, I, that i had promised a long time ago um, a while back actually a few months and uh, yeah i had many things to attend to so i didn't have the time to do it but better late than never right so I'm going to do my neck, show you how, how it's done, and uh, I'm going to do it, of course, my apartment, to show you that it's not uh, impossible to train your neck uh, without much space, you don't need a gym or specific stuff, thanks to the neck flex. And I will answer your question. I had made a little Instagram pull to, to post it, so yeah, here we go. Someone asked, I'm sorry, I uh, clopped the pseudo, what would contribute the most to back fullness and what would you recommend for neck workout without equipment? So for back fullness, first I would recommend mostly rows and daily variations to get really, really get thicker and build, and build the depth to the back muscle. And um, regarding neck without equipment, um, I would be choosing manual resistance, but that would require uh, a partner that know how to do it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty rare, but uh, that would be my go-to. So again, someone I copped the pseudo ask uh, in French, uh, comment traîner le dos sans matériel, which means uh, how to train the back without uh, any equipment. And uh, pull up, chin up, uh, inverted rows. I made a video about it uh, for lockdown training, so I will put a link somewhere above and you can check it out. So, can you see me here? I think so. <laughs> Put them here. Um, Kadiguru asks in French again, um, jeûne intermittent et testostérone, les liens, which mean intermittent fasting and testosterone, what are the links? Uh, none, actually none. Um, there is no evidence, science-based evidence or even anecdotal evidence that uh, intermittent fasting is rising your testosterone. It actually could be quite reverse. It could be dropping it because intermittent fasting for most people is still going to be a stress on the body. You do not, you do not need to forget that um, fasting is a stress on your body. It's going to lower mTOR and it's going to rise AMPK enzymes. So autophagy and many other things that are triggered by fasting. Uh, but the thing is that fasting is also going to, in most instances, rise your, your cortisol. And cortisol is a stress hormone that is directly competing with growth hormone, insulin, and testosterone. So um, fasting could be uh, something beneficial for you and your test level if you are used to way too much insulin rising and way too little uh, management in regard to inflammation and uh, food quality and caloric total which is still going to be key for testosterone the fat you, you consume the nature 
of a carb you consume, the protein intake you consume, but also the total carbs, the total calories, caloric amount, and that's without uh, mentioning all the micronutrients you're supposed to get and the trace element and so on and so forth. So, yeah. When people underestimate my fastness, I'm fast. I'm so fast, you couldn't even comprehend how fast I am. Uh. That's it for Nick Extension. And uh, Nick Lane, say hi. Hi. So I'm going to keep going with the neck rotation, but it's so fucking hot. I had to open the window and now there is some noise. I'm really sorry about that. Um, I'm going to keep going, as I said, with the neck uh, rotation. And I'm going to strap a band onto the uh, little barriers here that I have uh, just outside my window. And I'm going to do them around here. And I'm blocking the window with a chair. So yeah, we'll keep going, it's just that <laughs> with a cap uh, inside it's really really hot. Yeah. So, 1, 2, 3 Soleil demande quels sont les meilleurs exercices um, pour les trapèzes inférieurs moyens et la zone des rhomboïdes. Uh, which in English means um, he's asking what are the best exercises for the low traps, medium, middle traps and rhomboid region and it is basically um, every exercise that are going to allow you to retract your shoulder blade without much uh, interference uh, with the arms, the elbow flexor and the lats. So for most people it's going to be uh, every row variation with the elbows out which are partially deactivating the lats and are barely um, using the teres major muscle. Um, it's going to be all the wide grip uh, pull down variation if you tilt a bit back like this to have more um, a 45 degree, 60 degree incline pull and uh, it's going to be all the snatch grip deadly variation uh, since they are going to force you to pack and stay tight in this area and at the same time stretch them under load. So. Yeah, that's basically it. So, Sierra. 177 ask uh, in French, est-ce que un biceps secours, enfin, uh, est-ce que les biceps c'est important chez les ectomorphes quand on a biceps secours? Which means are short biceps uh, important uh, to develop when you are an ectomorph? And uh, I don't really see the point of this question. First and foremost, the morphotype or ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph, um, it doesn't exist. And um, about having short biceps. I have short biceps, as you can see here. Uh, you can go with two, two, uh, two finger to the hole right now, but it's actually thanks to my forearm. Normally there is three, uh, three, uh, three finger hole, which is uh, on the scale of uh, uh, good to bad, uh, just next to bad. So, uh, I mean, I'm supposed to have bad biceps genetics, and yet I have been able to fully develop arms that are. 44 um, centimeter or um, I think it's uh, 17 inches 0.5 something like this so yeah uh, what do you mean uh, it's not because you have a short muscle that you that it's bad and you do not need to develop it an ectomorph again do not, doesn't exist so if you are skinny or lanky or you feel like that you lack mass just train for mass add weight eat more and make sure to recover properly from what you're doing and if you have trouble developing your biceps, just find something that is going to make them respond to training. And uh, for most, it's going to get stronger on chin-up and pull-up variation and also curl variation. It also find curl variations that are going to allow you to isolate the bicep from the delt and the whole forearms that are going to compete with, with the biceps in, in order to uh, move the weight. So yeah, that's basically it. For this next part, training I'm going to use this. Where is the camera? Which is 
the door anchor. So you're supposed to use this device to be able to use the neck flex uh, next to a door frame by locking this and using the bend on this side. So how is it working? You see my door is opening this way, which means that uh, I'm going to use the door frame as a lock to get my neck on this side, the side I'm here right now, of the door. Why? Because here the door frame is, able to, is going to be able to lock both the door and any tension that is going to pull uh, on this direction. Whereas if I was going to use the neck flex on the other side, it was going to pull the door this way and pull onto the mechanism of the lock and I could potentially damage or harm it. So what I'm going to do is quite simple. You take this round piece, which is a door anchor, and you put it on the other side. Then you close the door, like this. Up, and as you can see here, I can pull as much as I want. It's not going to hurt anything. Then I get my bend. I loop it around like this. I attach it on the neck flex on this side. And voila, I can turn my neck without any problem. Again, ask, quel aliment consommes tu Which means, what food are you eating? Uh, everything. Everything. There is, no, there is nothing I am staying away except milk uh, that I do not digest well, but it's because in France we have trash quality milk. And uh, that's about it. which means to train or not the anterior delt, the front part of your shoulder. And um, for most people, I will say no. No, you do not need to train the front delt because this is one of the muscles that is recruited in nearly all pressing movement, but also in some instance in also curl movement. So you're going to use it uh, on your overhead presses variation, your bench press variation, the inclined presses uh, also, of course, the dips, uh, the push-ups, the flies, um, like any any pressing movement, plus the arm isolation, uh, especially when you have to stabilize the shoulder, and uh, that goes for both the biceps and the triceps work. So, uh, in my opinion, no. Uh, however, if you are someone who has very short clavicle and who have a thick, huge rib cage and thus have really prominent, big, bulgy uh, pectoral muscle. Uh, your front delt, if you are just doing presses, uh, is actually going to be uh, a, a weak body part because uh, the chest is going to steal the work and the triceps too, most likely. Uh, and in that instance, yes, you could directly train your uh, front delt via uh, front shoulder raises and other isolation work and really trying to focus on it. But like that's maybe one person out of, I don't know, 200 others. In my coaching experience, I have known only one guy that I had to, to train with front delt isolation because his chest was just so uh, prominent and so overpowering. But it was also because of his, his bone structure, basically. Max Delson asks in French, um, quel, quel est mon avis sur différentes méthodes de progression? Il a cité le 5x5 et le RPT, qui est le Rest Post Training. So, in English, Max Delson asks, what, uh, what is my opinion about uh, progressive overload method, like the 5x5 and the RPT, which is the Rest Post Training, I believe. Uh, um, I have nothing to think about it. It's either working or not for you. Uh, it will depend on your level of your recovery capacity, of how your nervous system is uh, working. Uh, it will depend of every sport you did before, uh, prior to training, like strength training with uh, weights. Uh, it depends on so much. It also depends, uh, are you doing 
yeah. your, your goals basically are what are you going to do is it for powerlifting competition bodybuilding competition uh, weightlifting competition arm wrestling or you're just a strength training enthusiast you know it, it really depends it also depends on your weak point your strong point so on and so forth so um, when you are uh, a beginner everything is going to work until it doesn't anymore and that's where you are supposed to uh, pick a few methods try them out and see how you respond um, and then it's about uh, all the strength cycle uh, progressive method so there is the uh, linear progression there is the non-linear the conjugated the um, how do you call it the cube method there is also the use of bands and chains and stuff like that so the progressive uh, overload range there is also the progressive um, ROM method so you begin with partial movement and then you more and more increase the range of motion uh, I will make an article and video about some method that I know and uh, have used but uh, the key point the only thing I could say is just to find what work for you and keep doing it until it doesn't work anymore and then you ask yourself what you could change it from uh, for and uh, yeah that's about it Ask, I take Adderall sometime instead of pre-workout. Is it bad? Uh, I don't know what's Adderall. We check. What the fuck? Why don't you just drink coffee? Come on, man. <laughs> For fuck's sake. No, do not take a roll. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. And we are done with this workout. Thank you so much for our watching this. Thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you so much, of course, for the question. Um, I will do something uh, similar in the future if you if you like it and if you are enjoying it, of course. Um, as I showed you, uh, you can really train your neck really easily with a neck flex, even if you are stuck inside your home uh, without any much uh, equipment. It's working, of course, really well. I, as you can see here, I'm pretty good uh, on the yoke uh, development, and uh, it reflects really thanks to the neck flex, of course, and a few other exercises. But uh, yeah, the neck flex is really in terms of practicity and uh, really uh, easiness to develop your neck like paramount basically and um, I thank them for sponsoring this video of course and I thank them for sponsoring me uh, alone so yeah uh, I feel blessed and uh, I'm happy to have a few people that discovered Netflix and even just neck training thanks to me and uh, I'm improving uh, a ton of people's life uh, as they say at least so yeah uh, make sure to leave a comment down below make sure to subscribe to like and share if you think that it's going to help a few more people to see that type of content and I'll see you soon for the rest. Thank you so much and take care.